Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. I welcome you here on this uh, last day of April, and we're still in the Easter season. Um, I hope we still have our lilies up here next week, but they're starting to drop pretty quick. So um, I've got my fingers crossed we'll at least get one more Sunday out of it. It's a gorgeous day out there. And as we gather today to continue with our Easter celebration, uh, for those of you who are going to receive communion later, I ask you to please make a private examination of your conscience. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, 
Let this be known to you and listen to what I say. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and for knowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, and you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Here ends the lesson. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Hallelujah. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Alleluia, alleluia. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God. She cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so I may worthy to claim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthy to claim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory be to you, Lord. Now that very day, two of them were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And as they were conversing about all these things that had occurred to them, and it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. And he asked them, What are you discussing about as you walk, walk along? And they stopped, looking downcast. And one of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there these past days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? And they said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and had him crucified. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all of this, it is now the third day since this took place. And some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. And then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. And as they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going to continue on farther. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that, while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. And then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? And so they set out quickly and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them, who were saying, The Lord has truly risen from the dead and appeared to Simon. And then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them at the breaking of bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Jesus.
God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. And this lecture taken from this morning's lesson in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the speeches that we hear in the Acts of the Apostles are judged to be some of the oldest Christian testaments of faith anywhere recorded. They reach back to the very first days of our 2,000-year-old faith as the men and women who had known Jesus of Nazareth, they begin to struggle with the idea that this man was more than he had appeared. The speeches are unfiltered by later theology. They only speak about Jesus, for example, as a man, and he is the vehicle that allows God to work in the world. So it's not Jesus who does it, it's God through Jesus. You know, today's Christianity, that wouldn't be sufficient. The church has grown in our idea of who Jesus was. So this is evidence that this is extremely early. They are facts and descriptions of what people had witnessed, and they're just beginning to process what it would mean. And that's why in, in a few weeks we're going to get to finally Trinity Sunday. At this stage, Trinity was not a concept that the church embraced. It took the church a full three centuries to come up with the idea of Trinity. There's that idea of growth and development, process and faith, and trying to always better understand Jesus. So let's take Peter's words as shared with us this morning by Alice Majewski, whose birthday is today. She did such a beautiful job. <laughs> he is speaking to non-believers. He is speaking on the streets of Jerusalem, and he's addressing people who had known Jesus, or at least had known of him, but these were people who were not convinced by anything that Jesus did or said. They only saw a man and nothing more. And the ones that Peter is speaking to are eyewitnesses. They saw what Jesus did, and they would not believe. And Peter says to them that Jesus was a man attested to you by God, and that his miracles were performed among you, as you yourselves know. He's talking to people who saw the blind see, the lame walk, and all of those other miracles of Jesus, and yet they would not believe in him. They had no idea that this Jesus was more than he appeared to be. Or let's jump to today's gospel. It's the famous and much-loved story of the road to Emmaus from Luke's gospel. And just like the unnamed disciple that we heard in John's gospel for the past couple of Sundays, today Luke shares with us an account between Jesus and two of his followers, but only one is named. We hear the name Cleopas, but the second person is never identified. This may well be a literary tool that lets any of us place our names in that slot so that you and I can walk with Jesus, with Cleopas, on that road to Emmaus. This is Luke trying to make a timeless statement that reaches across thousands of years and even right here to South Deerfield. The two disciples are walking away from Jerusalem. They're despondent. It says in the Bible that their heads were down and that they have seen Jesus' crucifixion. And now they're starting to hear rumors of Jesus' resurrection, but they will not yet believe. The women have seen, but that wasn't good enough for them. So they still are debating, could this have happened? And all of a sudden, a stranger appears beside them and joins them in their conversation. The reader knows that the stranger is Jesus, but these two disciples do not. They come to recognize the risen Jesus first through his words. Jesus opens the scriptures to them. And as we later hear in the Bible, it says, when he was talking to us about the scriptures, didn't our hearts burn within us? And then second, they recognize Jesus at the breaking of bread in communion. The two disciples are overjoyed. They rush back to Jerusalem to tell the others, but the others have already had resurrection appearances of their own. So they went desperately, they want desperately to share the good news and that Jesus is resurrected, and they found out about him through word and communion. Again, we have a story of people who are unable to see Jesus until they finally recognized him in word and communion, and they couldn't wait to share that with other people. And Luke knows what he's doing by leaving that one disciple a name. He's telling people of any ages, including those of our age today, that Jesus is still present in word and Eucharist, but it's up to us to see him first and then to share him second. In the words of Scripture is the actual voice of God. In the bread and the wine is the actual resurrected Jesus. What we have in today's readings, therefore, is first, Peter telling us in his eyewitnesses in Jerusalem that you saw Jesus, but you couldn't see him with eyes of faith. And then you have the disciples on the road to Emmaus who are walking with the risen Jesus, 
And they're saying, we heard rumors that he's resurrected, but they could not recognize Jesus either. And finally, the question to us here and now is, can we, beyond appearances, can we believe that Jesus is here in word and that he will be here at this humble table as well? And by here, I do not only mean in church and during church. If we can hear Jesus in his word, and if we can feel Jesus when we receive communion, then that means he stays with us. He doesn't disappear when we walk through those doors that are behind you. Jesus will stay with us throughout the week. Now this past week there was a, a TED conference in Vancouver, and a surprise speaker made a video appearance. And many of the people in attendance at these world famous TED conferences they are the presidents of major companies. They're the ones who start these famous startups that they turn quickly overnight people into billionaires. These are people engaged daily in the tech and the entertainment field. They're changing our world for their invention. And the surprise guest who spoke to them was Pope Francis. And the Pope told them, life is not time merely passing by. Life is about interaction. And the Pope continued, the future of humankind isn't exclusively in the hands of politicians, of great leaders, of big companies. Yes, they do hold an enormous responsibility, but the future is most of all in the hands of those people who recognize the other as a you and also themselves as part of an us. And he advised them with these words, tenderness means to use our eyes. Because he's saying that we don't see what we need to see. Tenderness means to use our eyes to see the other our ears to hear the other, to listen to the children, the poor, those who are afraid of the future, to listen also to the silent cry of our common home, our sick and our polluted earth. Tenderness means to use our hands and our heart to comfort the other, to take care of those in need. Again, we're hearing the message of seeing beyond appearances, of even seeing the presence of God in the often too overlooked of the world, in seeing that in them is God himself. In a short while, we'll sing during communion my favorite hymn, which is Earth and Vessels, and the choir's doing that for me because it, today's my birthday, and that's my birthday gift from them. My favorite hymn. I love Earth and Vessels. It reminds me that in humble vessels is that grand mystery of Jesus' presence, that Jesus doesn't need the fancy and the fine to be honored. It's not a matter of covering a chalice with jewels and gold that makes Jesus' presence it's just simply saying those words, this is my body, this is my blood, and Jesus is there. He came simply during his life, and it's no different now. He comes simply to us. He came for all of us, but most especially to teach us that every person matters, that we're all part of a grand us. So let us pray that we may see him, both in the expected and the surprising, and also in the extraordinary and the ordinary, but most of all, let's make sure that we try to see Jesus all around us. And for these things we pray in his name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I got a mention. Right over there is Janice DeGillis, uh, two past organists. And Janice's birthday is today as well. So Janice's birthday, Alice's birthday, my birthday. We're going to say some prayers for Robert Chekanowski and his two daughters and his wife are right there. Today is the anniversary of his birth. And also today is John and Lisa Lisensky's anniversary, uh, wedding anniversary. So this is one special day. So thank you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Lord, as we gather for your altar, as we continue to celebrate the mystery that is Easter, we continue to offer our prayers for Jenny Camara as she continues her recovery now at home, and this is being offered by her family. We continue to offer prayers for Liz Richman battling cancer and raising three young girls on her own, Alex, a 16 year old with lymphoma Hodgkin's disease. Alicia, a young mother of three with stage four breast cancer, is all offered by Cindy Benjamin. We continue to offer our prayers for Bishop Thomas Gannat's health, and uh, for that, uh, the strength of his wife Catherine is offered by myself. We also offer our prayers for those battling cancer, Meg Connors by Ellen and Don Skrosky. Maurice Lizelle is offered by myself. 
Richard Poe, it's offered by the Poe and Foster families. Two-year-old Jack Soleil is offered by Marianne Foster, and also Frank Marchand, Battle of Hanson. And as mentioned, we are also praying in memory of Robert Jekinowski, who would have celebrated his 78th birthday today, April 30th, always in our thoughts and our prayers among his family. Are there any prayers that you would like to offer from the congregation? For all of these prayers, Lord, for us to one who keep private in our thoughts before this altar, we ask the Lord to bless each and every one of us here gathered, to bless all of those who are parished or unable to be with us here today, and those who are parish who have chosen not to be with us here today. And for these things together, Lord, we pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, the Lord is with thee. Eternal breath of glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in the one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of the Lamb, light of the light, true God. God not made of one being in the Father. Through him all things are made. For us in our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again and fulfilled his
If anyone eats of this bread, he shall live forever. The bread I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And afterwards, when the temporal and messianic life of the divine teacher and giver of the covenant was drawn to a close, he gathered into the upper room all those whom he had loved in a singular way and had chosen to continue his work of salvation. He spoke to them words of deep love, longing, and resolve. I will not leave you orphaned. I will come back to you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Do not be distressed or fearful. You will suffer in the world, but take courage. I have overcome the world. If you live in me, and my words stay a part of you, you may ask what you will, and it will be done for you. Anyone who loves me will be true to my word, and my Father will love him, and will come to him, and make our dwelling place with him. I consecrate myself for their sakes now, that they may be consecrated in truth, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me and I in you, I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I living in them, you living in me, that their unity may be made complete. Father, all those you gave me I would have in my company, where I am to see this glory of mine, which is your gift to me, because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me shall ever be hungry. No one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these and other words of the archpriest in prayer and with holy birth, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands. Again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. resurrection and his glorious ascension, we receive from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance as from him who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls the same and true. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, Command that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who have passed on to eternity.
through him, and with him, and in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following divine example, we say with confidence, Shall I return to the Lord for all the graces that He has rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, 
and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, as she saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to see you, but only say the word, and I shall be.
participation in the body of Christ, the bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you made yourself known to your disciples in your word and in the breaking of bread and Emmaus. May we, through these same blessed sacraments, come to know you and abide with you forever. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Father, filled with enduring love. 